and welcome back to Otaku No Video as always. Thank you very much for joining me where today I'm reviewing Gundam The Origin. Not this, but the anime. Now, a couple years ago, Yoshikazu Yasuhiko, the character designer behind original Gundam, started creating a manga adaptation of the original Gundam series. This is basically as though they didn't have to worry about episode count and battles of the week and so forth, just telling the story itself uh, and giving it the kind of the room to breathe. And so there are a number of volumes of this out now. Then Sunrise and Bandai announced that they're going to do a an anime adaptation of that, but it's not actually the manga. Um, it is not actually adapting that. It is a new story. Gundam The Origin, the anime series, tells the backstory and the background leading up to the original Gundam series. So, the background to Char and his backstory and to other characters that had already been established, the Zabi family and such, in original Gundam, you now get to see where they came from and some of the events hinted at or talked about in original Gundam, you now actually get to see those occur. Uh, and it's basically set up, split up into four episodes. That's actually another thing which we'll get to here in a second. Um, it's technically going to be a six episode OVA. Um, it was originally going to be four episodes, but as I understand it, they got to episode four and realized they were going to have to restructure it. So I'm going to review those first four episodes. Episodes five and six have not been released yet because they are technically now a separate special. Still kind of part of Gundam The Origin, but its own thing. So the first four episodes deal with... Uh, so the first episode is basically the story of Zion Zoom Daikun, and the Zabi family, and what all happened with the Zabis taking over for Zeon and starting to establish the principality of Zeon as a, a, a concept. The episode two, Artesia's Sorrow, is the title, and I love that because it is such a, an original Gundam episode title. You know, Artesia's Sorrow. Uh, and that's basically about um, Kozval and Artesia growing up, where they're being shuffled from safe house to safe house, um, because of who they are and how, what that does to them as they grow up. Um, excuse me. Um, episode three is about Char in the Academy and how he gets on with, with Garma, Garma Zabi, which was talked about some in the in original Gundam, and you get to see how that is and how the heck, you know, Char Aznable, the son of the arrival to Garma, could, like, go to the academy with him, you see, you understand all that, and you understand uh, how that developed. And then episode four is basically the, the development of mobile suits and the lead-up to the one-year war. And so episodes five and six, and again, um, well, I won't reveal what episodes five and six are, but they are the events immediately leading up to, like, like a few months before original Gundam. And, um, and a very important plot line there. So it just didn't really fit into this, this structure. Uh, so that's the basic concept of Gundam The Origin. That's kind of the story they're telling. Um, so it follows mostly Char for the first three quarters of it, and then it kind of shifts to other characters. Now, one of the really fun things about this is the animation. The animators over there at Sunrise get a full chance to really animate something in great detail. Um, you know, the animation budget for this is quite high. And what's fun is because it's kind of a throwback to a 70s anime series, they're a little looser with the animation. The animation can be a little goofier, for lack of a better term. And I don't mean goofy in the sense of pratfalls or physical comedy, but I mean in the sense of a little wilder in terms of animation and movement and so forth. And the character expressions can be a little more um, strong right, where in traditional Gundam character uh, expressions are reserved. Um, you know, characters aren't, usually aren't trying to express a lot with their emotions because they're career soldiers and things like that. Whereas here, you get more... Um, it feels a bit like Lupin the Third in a weird way. Um, not in the wacky, over-the-top way, but there's this, um, again, this looseness and this fun to the animation despite it being a very dark and serious show. And, you know, the animation never feels out of place, but it feels um, like a slightly more 
slightly more of an animator's show, if you will, where they're able to express themselves more than they are in a lot of other anime projects. And of course, the, oh my goodness, the animation of the mecha is gorgeous. If you like Gundam and you like mecha, you're going to get plenty of beautiful stuff here. Um, this is just, this is exactly what the Gundam fan would want out of a lot of that stuff. Now, of course, you know, this being so early on, there's not that much mobile suit stuff in the first couple episodes, and that's just the way it is. There's a fair amount of mecha military stuff, so you'll certainly get your, your Jones of military action, but it's not that other stuff, you know. Um, anyway, moving on to the overall direction of this. Every episode is about an hour long, and they pack a lot into each of those episodes. One of the things I really like is that you, you see a lot of what's going on with these characters and development. They're, they're compressing a lot of history into these episodes. So while it never feels rushed, it moves at a, at a good clip, and you get to see what's going on. Um, now, if it has an issue, it is that there are quite a few characters to follow, and if you're familiar with Gundam, and especially original Gundam, you'll have no problem following that. If you're completely new to Gundam, you might get a little lost with who's who. So I certainly wouldn't start this as your first Gundam series. You certainly can, you aren't going to hate it by any stretch, but it's going to be a little overwhelming in terms of all the stuff they're throwing at you. So just FYI, and actually I'll go back on that. You could certainly watch this as your first Gundam. Um, just be aware that it's, it's, it's assuming you know some things you don't necessarily know, right? Um, but it, it'll certainly work. Um, the overall pace moves, I, I would say, a more rapid than normal pace for most anime. Again, most anime, you've got a lot of episodes to kind of fill out. With this, you've got four hours, and that's it. It's, it's shorter than your average 13-episode anime series. So they do move pretty quickly, which is, again, kind of, kind of nice. Now, one of the things you're going to want to know about is characters. I'm not going to get too much into who does and doesn't show up in these, because I think it's a spoiler. Part of the fun of this is seeing classic Gundam characters showing up in, uh, in a show like this. You do see quite a few of them. Um, there are one or two that feel like unnecessary cameos, where... Oh yeah, that character shows up, but why would they be there? Like it, it feels like all of these lives are intertwining before they then separate and then intertwine again. So I, I do feel like there are one or two too many cameos in the sense that, I'll put it this way, I don't mind cameos when you know that these characters are all over the place, but some, several of these cameos involve characters who happen to cross paths you know, before they cross paths in the TV series. So I think they went a little too far there. Um, that said, one of the great things is you get to see these characters before original Gundam. So you see them earlier in their lives. And they do an, an incredibly good job of establishing and building those characters and seeing where they go, especially Char. It's no surprise, I think, that Char is in these, these episodes. And understanding now where Shar comes from psychologically and what he went through really helps to deepen your appreciation of the character. He is a mysterious, enigmatic character, and he, he does not cease to be. Um, this does not cheapen or simplify Shar by just explaining his personality or psychology, but you get to see more of the forces at work, and so you're able to appreciate where he's coming from in a lot of of what he does. You don't necessarily agree with a lot of what he does, but you you see the pattern in a very helpful and interesting way. So that's that's really cool and nice. Now, I do like to talk about believability here, um, and believability is same as in any typical Universal Century Gundam series, right? There are certain pieces of tech that just kind of work and kind of do their things, and people are kind of obsessed with humanoid um, mecha in space and just kind of having that as a thing. You know, gun tanks and gun cannons and such, which never do quite make sense, um, but that's just a thing, right? But beyond that, they try to make this a very realistic and sensible thing. There's also some nice elements about the building of the colonies and the building of the sides and establishing all that. 
excuse me, I have a little gnat flying around here. So, again, if you can appreciate Gundam's approach to technology and believability and reality, this totally fits into that. Um, it is reasonably hard science fiction. Now, I listened to this with the Japanese dub because I've watched most Gundam in, uh, in Japanese. That's just how I've been able to get most of it. So, um, as always, the voice acting in this is top-notch. No complaints. Um, I will say that they, I think they got other voice actors for some of the characters when they're kids. So if you see, you know, a, a, a famous anime character, so for example, uh, you know, again, it's kind of no spoiler, Shar shows up when he's quite young, and I think it's a different voice actor playing him when he's, you know, like 10 years old. But once the characters enter, like, their teenage years, then the original voice actors come back when they're available, and you get to see them, um, you, you get to hear them, I should say, uh, do their roles. So that's nice to hear. And uh, those, are, those are definitely classic characters and ca classic voices. So they fit. You know, no problems there. And, and the side characters do a good job with, with uh, doing their stuff. So full marks there for, for that. Um, overall, I found this to be a certainly a love letter to fans. Gundam the Origin is a lot of the things that Gundam fans have been wanting to see for decades finally realized with a high budget. And to me, you know, for a lot of Gundam fans, that's all you need. Uh, what's great is that they package that into a sensible set of storylines that reveal a lot about what's going on. I will say that the it works best as a an explanation to fans of what happened in the past. It does not work as well as here's... A th as it, the plot does not hold together as well on its own as a lot of other Gundam projects. This is not a 0080, not a 0083. These, this is more like Gundam Evolve. This is a series of, of short films establishing various characters' motivations and backstory. Um, in that sense, it works a lot like, say, a Civil War movie, where you get to see this progression of various characters. You don't necessarily get to see how the world ended up as a result of this, right? This is a slice of history. It happens to be a future history. Um, but it's more about following these characters on this path. Um, so yeah, I don't think it holds together very well as a standalone project, but as a Gundam fan project, it is glorious. You know, for those of us who love Gundam, I, I think, I can't imagine somebody who loves Gundam not enjoying this on some level. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of where we have to go on that. So